Good evening. Welcome to the second edition of Connections with Kenyatta Collins. I'm your host, Kenyatta Collins. How did you enjoy the first edition? If you missed it, don't fret. There's always a way to catch up on any missed episode. Just simply subscribe to my YouTube channel, Connections with Kenyatta Collins, to receive updates and exciting news about the show. In tonight's episode, we talk with a local gym owner who's also a certified personal trainer who has some valuable information to share with you on the importance of working out and eating healthy. Plus, I sat down with newly elected East Baton Rouge Parish School Board member Darius Lanus to discuss the positive changes to come in District 2 and what the residents can expect from him. And we all know how Louisiana weather can be, hot one minute, cool the next. We have the AC guy here to give you tips to maintain your heating and air during this season. All of this and more when we return from the break to Connections with Kenyatta Collins. Shiloh has a long and rich history, but we're more than just a church. We have a high and inspiring worship experience, but we offer so much more. Dance ministry, music ministry, scouting ministry, Sunday school, Bible study, day camp, we have a lot to offer here at Shiloh. Come check us out. We'd love to have you here. wanted to commit to working out and living a healthy lifestyle but lack the motivation? I agree that joining a gym can be stressful. I took a trip to one of Baton Rouge's premier fitness center to talk all things health and fitness related. Every January people flood the gym in brand new workout clothes all hoping this will be the year their goals become reality. In the beginning of the year our membership skyrockets. It, even people who have had memberships and we haven't seen or they just kind of pop in here and there in the beginning of the year they're here every day sometimes doing classes back to back so the appointments that I have made for consultations and people coming in the phone calls and emails just skyrocket I don't, I don't know what it is I guess it's just the hype that's happened with new year new you type thing and it's it works for us. Meet certified personal trainer and local gym owner, India Ambo. I've been into fitness since I was a kid. I've been an athlete all of my life, but I became a certified personal trainer in 2014. And after that, we opened the business in April of 2015. Along with her husband, who is also a certified personal trainer. Uh, we put a lot into this because we could both, my husband and I could both just be trainers at anybody's gym working for other people, but we felt like it was important to show people that everybody can be involved in fitness and everybody can have their own business. It is hard, but it's so worth it when you start meeting people and helping them reach their goals and helping them do things that they didn't think they could do with just a little bit of encouragement. And so being able to do that for ourselves makes all the difference. Imagine a gym that offers customized meal plans, 30-minute workout sessions with certified personal trainers. So get your rear in gear here at the Fit Body Boot Camp. The thing is here, our workouts are 30 minutes. We are in and out. So you can imagine what type of workout you're getting in 30 minutes. You're getting in and out, you're getting everything you need, and we're moving on. So we're offering the entire package. We're not just giving you workouts and sending you home. We're giving you customized meal plans. I find out what their body type is and I give them a diet specifically for that. On top of that, we keep track of progress. So we weigh you, we do your BMI, body fat percentage, every month just to see if you're making progress. So whatever meal plan you're on, I see how it's affecting you. If you're losing weight, we leave you on it to make sure you're continuously losing weight. When you get to the point where you start to plateau, we change it up and we give you something else just to make sure you're constantly making progress. We run little incentives inside the gym. Sometimes I run a challenge and be like, hey, um, 
somebody, whoever has the best workout today will win two tickets to the movies, or I do small gift cards to like different stores, Nike store, whatever I can find, just something to kind of whoever shows up that day, they'll get a prize. And I do challenges, I'll do six week challenges just to kind of get new people in, just to give them a chance to try it out, see if they like it, see if it works with their schedules, or see if the workouts are even something that they feel like they can do. And I think one thing about boot camp that scares people, they feel like they cannot do it or it's going to be too challenging or too high of a level and it's not like that. Everything here can be done at your own pace and you build up. We preach that you can do things slowly and gradually and when you do things that way, it's much easier to maintain it afterwards. When you lose weight very quickly, it's hard to maintain it. But when you lose weight in a slow, manageable way, you know how to maintain it after you leave us. Because realistically, you shouldn't need a trainer for the rest of your life. I'm here to teach you what you need. So after you leave me, you could take that information, use it, and continue to keep get better. For Connections, I'm Kenyatta Collins. Be sure to continue to tune in to Connections with Kenyatta Collins to follow my weight loss journey as I have taken the initiative by joining Fit Body Boot Camp. We'll be right back. <laughs> Whether it's hot or cold, our AC guy has you covered. In tonight's segment of Connecting the Dots, Mr. AC Man himself wants to give you the 411 on how to effectively operate your heating and air systems this season. Good evening. This is Johnny Jones, the AC Guy, here to give you a couple of tips on your AC system for this Louisiana season on this edition of Connect the Dots. We all know Louisiana weather can be a little iffy, you know, cool in the morning, warm in the noon, and even cold in the evening, which will have you switching your thermostat from heat to cool several times a day. Preventive maintenance is a great way to catch problems before they become headaches for your AC system. Even during this uneasy season of this cool and warm weather, it's still important, very much important, to get a thorough cleaning check of your AC system. Anything from your evaporator condenser coil, which affects heat exchange, which also affects the efficiency of your system. Also clean and check your air filter inside, which helps with the air quality and also helps with the heat exchange. And with the AC guy, we also check your drain, which also clean and check, and even your duct work, which helps with your temperature of your air quality, and also sweating around the ducts. Right now, during this time in Louisiana, it's pretty much a downtime for a lot of AC guys, like myself. So, you can call right now and get a spring maintenance schedule with your local company, or you can call Johnny Jones, the AC guy, at 225-522-2362. So other things that you can take upon yourself to do in your house, you know, just a sightsee or anything, look at your cars, if they're dirty, you know, call your local technician. Make sure you point that out to him whenever he comes in. Anything else, your air quality, if you want to point that out, even your air temperature that you feel like is not adequate or is not efficient enough. Anything that you feel like you want to point out, you should to your local AC technician. We'll get that taken care of. I'm Johnny Jones, the AC guy. You can reach me at 225-522-2362. And this has been your Connect the Dots. What up, Kenya? is newly elected East Spanish Parish School Board member Darius Lanus as well as District 2 representative. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. No problem at all. It's my pleasure. So kind of tell me, what do you have going on? What started with the you in politics? Um, I think for me, uh, it's less about politics for me. It's more about doing what's best for children. Um, I've been in education now for the past five years, and I've been working in some of our lowest performance schools and some of our most at-risk youth. Um, and to me, I think that they need advocates. I think that uh, they need advocates that look like them, that think like them, and that can uh, get things done on their behalf. I think that their voices are important, and I think that uh, anybody that's going to fight for them, they need to make sure that those voices are also heard at the end of the day. So that's always my driving force. Uh, the community that I represent now is the same community that I went to school in. Uh, when I was uh, coming up, 
up. I was raised in the Glen Oaks community. I'm still rooted in that community to this day. Um, I attended Forest Heights Elementary, Glen Oaks Middle School, which is now shut down and closed, as well as Glen Oaks High School. Um, so for me, it has always been about giving back to those students and letting them see that there is somebody out there fighting for them because they do matter at the end of the day. Glen Oaks Middle is shut down? Yes, it has been shut down now for the past five years uh, due to low performance and also inequitable uh, funding uh, for the school. Is that something you're looking into reopening? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I don't know if it'll be at the same campus because the current campus has not been kept uh, well in terms of preventative and corrective maintenance. Um, it, the buildings are for the most part uh, condemned, so I would like to see that building torn down because I don't want to see blight in that area. I think it's the last thing uh, that those uh, constituents as well as those students should see on a regular basis is blight. Um, I would love to see Glenos uh, Middle School come back. Uh, the way that we get there, I think that we work across the lines with the board to see that we are doing the right things in that area for those students. Why District 2? Uh, it's my heart, you know. Uh, for me, everything about my campaign has been community-centered <clears throat> from the very beginning, which is why uh, I initially started off by saying I'm not going to accept any funds from East Baton Rouge Parish, and I wanted to take those those monies and pour it back into my community by creating scholarships by, and also making District 2 the, f the very first scholarship school board district. Um, uh, the way that we have projected um, the amount of money that's going to be invested into those students is going to be about $144,000 over 12 years. And that's not any money that we have to go out and raise. That's not any taxes that we have to come out and try to implement and pass again. Because in Louisiana, we have some of the highest taxes in the country. It's money that's coming directly out of my pocket, and I'm giving back to my community and to those students. Interesting. So during the day, you're an educator. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Um, it's very busy. <laughs> it's, it, has, it has been busy, but it's fun, you know, uh, reaching those students. You know, a, a lot of people don't like to uh, work in those types of schools. And what I mean by those schools are low performance schools because it is a challenge. And it has its challenges because you don't have the same uh, types of teachers at, the, or those, at those campuses. You don't have the same support systems at those campuses. And you just don't have, uh, you know, people that are just really willing to work with those that, that level of student or that population of students. And But for me, I love it because Again, that's where I come from. Um, when I was in school, I was an at-risk youth. Uh, that's what I was labeled as. So that means something for me to go in the, and so inside of those schools every single day for those students to see someone that came from the same communities as they did and that's that that still rooted in those areas and is still trying to fight for them. So for me, it's just about just being seen. Uh, you know, let's talk into more action. So that means you're an awesome mentor. I try to be. <laughs> so do you have any mentorship programs going on right now? Um, it's, it's crazy that you say that. Uh, one that we're really focusing on trying to get off the ground right now is called Generation Next. And it's uh, it, it takes on several, uh, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, organization that we're trying to get going on with uh, one of my partners, Mr. Herzog Avarez III. Um, and it's, it, it incorporates uh, mentorship, partnership with community stakeholders, as well as uh, community service projects that's going to help revitalize a lot of the things that we want to see happen in North Baton Rouge. To anyone that's looking to volunteer with you in the upbringing and the positivity of District 2, how would they get in contact with you? Um, they can get in contact with me uh, in several different ways. If they want to get in contact with me, they can call my cell phone personally, which my phone number is 225-266-9418. If they want to email me, they can email me at Lannis4Schools, all one word, all lowercase, uh, at gmail.com. Or they can go on any social media platform and find me on Facebook. My name is Darius C. Lannis JD. On Instagram, my name is Darius Lannis. But any shape or form, any way that they can get in contact with me, always open, always willing to uh, bring in newpeners and anybody who wants to engage in helping to transform those communities. Do you have any community events coming up? Um, none right now. Actually, I'll, I'll take that back. I'm sorry. Uh, There's a community v, uh, event on Saturday, January the 28th. It's with SLICE, which stands for the South Louisiana Coalition of Educators. Um, as myself, as well as the other newly elected uh, school board member, Tremel Howard, that we're hosting with the community just to talk about a lot of the things that we want to get done over this next year. And of course, rolling out our 100-day plans to say how we're going to try to progress uh, in working on several different uh, key areas, one of which is universal early child education, which is vitally important for low, low for low performing schools also uh, teacher pay uh, in Louisiana we have some of the lowest salaries for our teachers and that's something that we definitely have to get in front of the national average right now for our teachers is about fifty six thousand dollars a year um, the regional average is about fifty two thousand dollars a year in Louisiana we're below that in Louisiana the average for teachers is about forty eight thousand but in East Baton Rouge Parish is about forty four thousand dollars so we have some work to get done I know the governor has committed to making sure that we can make those things happen 
So uh, we're going to be very proactive. Uh, everybody that's working with myself uh, about working with the governor of Louisiana to get those things done, working with the mayor of Baton Rouge to get in front of uh, uh, Cradle Decay programs, again, universal early child education, and also working across the board with our Republican uh, uh, colleagues to make sure that we can get those things done for our teachers because they deserve it too. How many years have you been in this fight for education? Um, I've been in this fight now. Um, man, it, it goes back. You know, uh, when I was an undergrad, I was actually a Ronald E. McNair, Ronald e. McNair scholar. At Southern? Yes, at Southern University. Okay. And uh, when I was there, I had the opportunity to study at the University of Illinois with one of the most profound professors in the country for uh, black history and black education, which is Dr. James D. Anderson. And under his tutelage, I learned so much about how to advocate on behalf of schools like Southern University, HBCUs that um, that reflect Southern University like Grambling, uh, Xavier, and how to fight on a statewide level to advocate for those schools and be a voice for them. Um, the research that I conducted was surrounded around uh, protecting HBCUs much like Southern University and making sure that we sustain uh, those types of schools because they have a place uh, within our communities. You know, uh, historically we were not allowed to go to PWIs or uh, which is referred to as pre uh, predominantly white institutions. Institutions. So uh, HBCUs were created for us to attend, and they are still vitally important today because non-traditional students don't uh, necessarily or don't always go to uh, are the same. They're not on the same track as traditional students or students that go to college right out of high school. Non-traditional students are typically people that work jobs uh, every single day, have to go to school at night. I was that type of person. Even though I went to school right out of high school, I was still was the type of person where I had to work uh, in order to pay my way through school. But I used that as a uh, pathway to help me uh, create my future and find success in everything that I do now. I was reading an article about you before the interview and mm -hmm. it said that you're very passionate about charter schools. Mm -hmm. I know that Mr. <clears throat> Ray, isn't it a part of the Franciscan, uh, is it not the lake school, the school that the lake has? Okay. No, it's okay. Yeah, so it is a Franciscan okay, school. I thought so. Okay, I uh, But it's not a charter school. Not it's a, a private school. school. Okay, it's uh, private if you, uh, school. The, it's, it's, I guess you would almost say it's almost like a redemptress high school uh, because of the flood. Redemptress's property was, much of it was destroyed, so they had to tear it down. So then uh, Crystal Ray came in and located back on that same property to give uh, students in that area uh, from, or that come from more likely disadvantaged communities, give them a chance to come to a school and have a private school experience. Um, for me, it's not so much about charters. For me, I am pro student. I'm pro education. It doesn't matter to me what school that what school a child goes to. That's the parent's choice where they want to send a child. For me, it's about is it a stable environment? Is it a healthy environment? Is it growing students? Is it conducive for their learning? If it is, then I'm all for it. Um, and it could be charter. It could be traditional. I just want to fight for students and making sure that they have uh, safe spaces to learn and grow. At the end of the day. Okay. What is your title at Crystal Ray? Um, I am the Dean of School Culture. So I handle all uh, expectations, norms, uh, culture for the school, and uh, I also uh, work on activities for students, um, also um, uh, AD for the school as well. So I do athletic. I'm over the athletics for the school too. So it's a, it's a, it's a combination of different things, uh, but it's, it's very fruitful, and uh, I love the job that I do. I get to interact with students while also being a part of administration. So it's almost like I'm a liaison between administration, teachers, and students. So I absolutely love it. So before you got into this, what were you doing before? Um, I was, uh, it's crazy, uh, I was actually teaching. So my first year that I started law school was my very first year teaching. So when I entered Southern University the Law Center, um, I, uh, I entered as a part-time student so I could still work in the daytime. So I've always been involved in education in terms of teaching and being uh, instrumental inside of students' lives. Um, I have uh, taught a plethora of different uh, courses such as uh, English. I've also taught social study, which is my content area, but I've also taught uh, public speaking as well for students. Um, and throughout the years, I've just grown throughout those systems. And uh, I guess you could say I, I not so much flourish, but I just found my way throughout it because I had healthy mentors that really helped me to grow and hone in on how I can be uh, just more involved inside of those school settings. Um, after finishing law school, which my focus was uh, education law and taxation law, um, I went back to school again and I got my master's in educational leadership at Southern University, uh, which is, uh, I'm, I'm almost done with that. I have a few more classes and I actually graduate this May uh, with my master's in educational leadership so for me uh, I guess you could say I, I didn't really choose education I guess it found me and um, ever since then I just I've just jailed to it and um, I've just been trying everything possible to just be as innovative as possible and be transformative as possible uh, for our students for our students in our schools what does the future hold for you 
Um, for me, um, you know, I, I'm really focused on uh, doing a lot of things for our students. Um, I got into this. Uh, I got into this office, I uh, sought this office uh, for a reason, so I can really make a change and a difference, not only in my community, but all across East Baton Rouge Parish. Uh, currently, we have about 32 failing schools, so that's about uh, half of the schools in our parish are failing, and we're the second largest school district in uh, Louisiana, so it's about making sure that I leave a lasting mark for those students and for students to come. Um, in terms of uh, political ambitions or endeavors, um, right now, I'm not too much focused on that. I think that uh, those are things that are going to choose and find me, much like education did, and if it is an opportunity in the future, of course, uh, I will look into it. But for now, I think I'm, I'm for the most part, uh, set and I'm honed in on what the job is uh, laid ahead for me. So I really want to focus on that. You mentioned those failing schools in your district. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about that? Um, I'm doing a whole lot of things. So right now, uh, since being sworn in, I have been on uh, a District 2 school tour. I've already seen about uh, five schools, and I have about six more schools to see. I have been in constant contact with those school leaders. They are excited uh, at the fact that uh, I want to come in and talk to their students. I have uh, different things that I want to do inside of the schools as well, and uh, I've already taken on a few students that I want to mentor personally, uh, some, of, some of which is at uh, Glen, I'm not going to start, not Glen, but Forest Heights Elementary School. They have a, a boss program where you bring in community leaders that really want to hone in and work with students, and that's two students that uh, I've already uh, met and I personally want to mentor because they say they want to be uh, attorneys and they also want to be a judge. So being that I've already been down that career path, I feel like I can really help hone in on them and help them uh, find their way throughout the years. Okay. Aside from teaching and your hands in the community, what else is Darius Lanus? Um, he's just very community centered. Uh, he's a fun guy. I think some people really see me uh, in a more serious light, but once you get to know me, you'll find out that I'm really a silly person. You know, I think that there's a time and a place for that, though. Um, and when you talk about schools and students, I don't think there's a time to play. I think that it's a very serious matter, uh, more specifically in those communities that look like mine, uh, District 2, District 3, District 4, District 5, where we have a slew of uh, failing schools. And that's really what I want to try to help fix. Is Crystal Ray a part of District 2? Yes, it's actually in the District 2 community, but it's not a District 2 school. Okay. But uh, I treat every school the same way. I don't care if you are a Bessie approved charter. I don't care if you are an EBR approved charter or a traditional school. I want to be involved in what happens inside of those school settings. I want to be involved in those students' lives to make sure they are geared and going in the right place. And I just want to help change a lot of the things in those areas. So with your passion about changing those schools, those areas, would you be interested in leaving Crystal Ray to possibly seek employment at one of those failing schools in your district? Um, not right now. Uh, for me, what you find is that once you start building relationships with students, you don't want to break those relationships, especially not immediately. And since I just joined on with Chris Ray, I think I have a job to do. And when I finish that mission, then I think that's something that I could explore, but it's not something that I think about. I really want to make sure that I'm doing the best job at Chris Ray and really moving those students and being an effective part of their lives. I know that you mentioned about the funding that you received during your campaign. Mm -hmm. You took that money and turned it into scholarships for the mm -hmm. students at Glen Oaks, right? Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Uh, well, it, it that wasn't the only thing that we did. So uh, before... Um, we even got into the campaign. I was already uh, getting involved in different scholarships. Um, one of which was the uh, Sankofa scholarship that I partnered with with two other Southern University alum, and uh, we did a, a, a competition where we told students that were going to be first-time students being admitted to Southern University that if they met a list of criteria, we were going to select the best student, and we ended up doing that. And I was very proud of that. Where are you getting the funding from for these scholarships? Um, it's all coming out of my pocket. Yes. Out of your pocket. yes, everything's coming out of my pocket, and it's money that I would regularly receive from EBR school system as a, in the a form of a salary. But I said I don't want to take it at all. I think that I'm fine with the current salary that I do have and other things that I am doing with inside of the community. For me, it's just all about giving back. So let me make sure <clears throat> I get this right. Mm -hmm. Any child in District Two mm -hmm. that is graduating and mm -hmm. wants to further their education, mm -hmm. you have the funding for them. Yes, we will have the funding for them. That'll be about twelve thousand dollars every single year. All they have to do is apply. And again, uh, in the first four years of my first term with them being in the office, that'll be almost $50,000 invested into those students. Um, and over the 12 years of my full term and being in the office, it'll be almost $150,000 invested back into them. 
Now, is there a certain GPA that they need to maintain? Yes, yes, Are there yes. requirements for these scholarships? Yes, so it is a requirement. Okay. So it would be such things like uh, the minimum GPA would be a 2.5. Now, we could set it higher, but I want to give students that, are, uh, that, that may not be as high also a chance. I think it's also about the character. You know, so oftentimes we look at GPA, but I also want to look at the character of the students. Um, they have to commit to community service projects. That way, and we're talking about cleaning, cleaning up the community, um, just being readily involved inside of the, the community and around District 2. I think that's uh, really big, and it also speaks to their character again. Um, and also, an uh, essay writing contest. I want to know what you want to use the funds for. You know, we, just, we don't just want to give funds out uh, that easily, and we don't know where the funds are going to go. We want to make sure that it is a, 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 a steady commitment, and we want to make sure that that is something that we can continue that is sustainable. Since you've been elected, you have a record of everything that you've changed so, mm -hmm. so far. What else? aside from education in the community and those things that you're looking to change? Um, I want to change the conditions of how we see uh, the culture in North Baton Rouge. Um, when you talk about North Baton Rouge communities, you, all you hear about are the bad things. You hear about the crime. You hear about um, the uh, lack of jobs. You hear that we don't have uh, sustainable uh, health care systems. And all of those things are true. So I want to get involved in things that school board members don't readily talk about. I want to talk about things that happen in the legislature. I want to talk about things that happen on the city wide level. I think because I, in these positions of power, we are um, almost, we almost uh, take those things on inherently and I want to make sure that those things are addressed because those things also affect my students and they also affect me as well. If we don't have hospitals, then how can we adequately uh, receive health care? If we don't have uh, uh, effective schools, then how can we expect our students to grow? How can we expect our areas to grow? So those conversations need to be had, and I want to make sure that I'm at the table to in ensure that those uh, conversations are being facilitated correctly. I think that Connections with Kenyatta Collins is excited to have mm -hmm. you on board as a guest, mm -hmm. and if there's anything that we can do at Connections to assist in your district too, let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, it was a pleasure being here. I thank you all for inviting me. And if you ever want me back, please let me know. Uh, anything I could do to help you all, just let me know. I'm all, always going to be there for you. We'll be right back. Attention all parents. Prestige Dance Academy is offering cheer and dance classes for children ages three and up. Register online at www.prestigedancevr.com or call 225-443-0770. Prestige Dance Academy, where everyone is treated like royalty. Located inside Upstate Theater at Catano Mall, 9701 Catano Place, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I've enjoyed spending part of my Friday night with you. I just know that you're excited about next week's show, as am I. Be sure to tune in next Friday night at 10, right here on Channel 19, Cox Cable, and AT&T Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Kenyatta Collins. Have a great night.